Okay, my name is Elizabeth sabadich -Vorf. I am uh, an Austrian citizen, and uh, I'm very excited to be here in Israel, and I thank uh, Mr. Uh, Chita Cohen Chaim for... first, Chaim first. Cohen for inviting yeah, us. Right. And I, the State of Israel is a modern incarnation of one of the ancient sources of today's civilization. Our civilization, Western civilization, traces its origins to the confluence of Judaic, Hellenic, and Roman cultures in what eventually became Christian Europe. This civilization is now under siege, both from without and especially from within. I am here today to re represent two defenders of our civilization, the citizens' movements Pax Europa, in German it's called Bürgerbewegung Pax Europa, and uh, a group called Act for America. Let me tell you a little bit about each one. Pax Europa is a European civil rights movement and a human rights organization. Our objectives are to protect not only the democratic, free, and secular rule of law in our country, but also to struggle, also to struggle for European culture based on the Judeo-Christian traditions and especially on the values of the Enlightenment. These are the values that are currently under threat throughout the nations of the West. In order to achieve our objectives, we offer lectures, panel discussions, and conferences. In addition, Pax Europa also participates in the OSC Human Dimension, of which I will have the pleasure as of Thursday and Friday to attend another conference uh, in Vienna, in the Hofburg. In order, uh, we are an independent, non-partisan movement. We clearly distance ourselves from all right-wing or left-wing extremists and all xenophobic movements. Our sole purpose is to champion the values and freedoms that form the cornerstone of our civilization. Pax Europa is the enemy of anyone who threatens those values and freedoms, and the friend of anyone who defends them. Act for America is the na largest national security movement in the United States. It is an issues advocacy organization dedicated to effectively organizing and mobilizing the most powerful grassroots citizen action network in America. We are committed to informed and coordinated civic action that will lead to the public policies that promote America's national security and the defense of American, defense of American democratic values against the assault of radical Islam. As an Act for America international chapter leader from Austria, I wanted you to know just how much a safe and secure Israel means to me and to Brigitte Gabriel, our, nation, our organization's founder and president, who was able to save her life by escaping into northern Israel from war to Lebanon in 1982. And here's what she says. We value you immensely. We work in faith, fight and pray for you. We support Israeli-made products. We are constantly promoting pro-Israel rallies in the West. We are in your corner and at your side every step of the way. She also says, thank God for Israel. Know that we will do anything in our power to love, respect, and defend you. May God bless you. May God bless you. These are Bridget Gabriel's words. Ladies and gentlemen, our civ no civilization is eternal. Because Western civilization has been in the ascendant for the last few centuries, there's a tendency to think that what we have built is the final state of, at which mankind has arrived, that we have reached, as Francis Fukuyama put it, the end of history. This is the hubris of the high, highest order, especially given that all the indicators of the dangers currently faced by our civilization from both within and without. The signs may, all, may not always be obvious, but they are there, and they are growing in number. The death of a civilization does not only come when sand dunes drift in over the rubble of a once proud city. The end is not necessarily marked by an invasion of barbarian hordes, or the burning and looting of our homes and businesses. A civilization can also die from within, when it forgets the core values that once made it great when it stops believing in its own fundamental tenets. The disappearance of civilizational self-confidence in Europe can perhaps be traced back to the unimaginable and pointless slaughter of the First World War, or to the Holocaust, or other horrors of the Second World War, or to the ravages of 70 years of communism, 
or to a, a societal innovation imposed on the continent by a socialist welfare state, or perhaps some combination of all of these. Whatever the reason, European civilizational self-confidence is all but gone. This is why multiculturalism has become the dominant ideology in Europe. This is why Europeans have imported millions of unassimilable foreigners. This is why we abase ourselves to the newcomers and accede to their every demand. Islam is a threat to Europe because the heart of civilization has already gone cold. If it were still beating, Islam would be of no more concern than it was a century ago. And millions of Muslim immigrants would not be among us. Those of us who still love our civilization and what it stands for are in the front lines of a new war. People such as Kat Villos and myself are on trial for speaking out in defense of our liberties and our democracy. Others have been silenced through intimidation, ostracism and the threat of destitution. The oligarchs who control the European Union are determined that there shall be no dissenting with their program of abolishing the peoples of Europe and replacing them with another. This war is a quiet one. It doesn't involve guns and bombs and tanks and fighter jets. No corpses litter the battlefield. But it is just as real and it is at least as important as any previous war fought on European soil. On its successes or failure depends the nature of the civilization that will reside in Europe over the next century, if indeed there will be any successor civilization at all. And Israel is on the front lines of the very same war. Israel is surrounded by the barbarism and backwardness and destitution that awaits us all if we continue to surrender to the evil forces that would destroy Western civilization. We have only to look as what, at what has happened in Lebanon over the last 50 years to see what the future that awaits a modern multicultural Europe. And we only have to look a few kilometers to the south of this spot, actually Ashkelon, the speech was supposed to have been uh, said in Ashkelon, uh, of this spot to see what Israel would have be like if it were not inhabited by the Jews. A satellite photograph of the Gaza Strip reveals something telling. When you move a bit south from Ashkelon or a bit west from Sterot, the rich and productive landscape of Israel abruptly ends and the vast wasteland of Gaza begins. This wasteland extends further south into Egypt, east into Jordan, and north into Lebanon. Israel is an oasis of civilization is in a desert of barbarism. This is why Israel is so important to the struggle against the great jihad. Anyone who is committed to resisting Islamization will find in Israel a natural ally. This is not a matter of left and right. Sharia has no respect for, uh, for any of our political parties. It does not recognize the very foundation on which our diverse political structures rest. Make no mistake about it. The fight against Sharia is a fight to save civilization itself. Discover the future of Europe and Israel if the door is not closed against expansionist Islam. Examine what remains of Zoroastrian Persia or Buddhist Afghanistan or Christian Syria. This is what awaits us if we do not act now. Our great civilization will be replaced by poverty and despotism and degradation. Our civilization is ours to reclaim if we only have the will to do it. Our moment has come, and I thank you very much for your attention.